What's up guys? Today, I'm going to show you how to turn one of these into one of these. map sensors go, uh, aftermarket map sensors tend to be pretty pricey to get one that will work with your stock harness. Uh, this was the cheapest way that I found to do it. Uh, instead of paying anywhere from $50 to $80, it's going to cost you about $13. Just got to get a stock map sensor and we're going to be basically swapping out the guts on the inside to uh, make it be able to read more boost. What I'm going to be working on today is a 2.5 bar, but they also make uh, three and four bar versions of this. In the description, I will link these so that you can get them. I think they're about $13 a piece. Um, basically, we'll uh, start by taking this thing apart and cleaning all the guts out. Uh, I didn't press record whenever I did all this work, so I will just explain to you exactly what you need to do to take out this, take this apart. Uh, basically, this your two halves will be together. You're going to drill out the rivets with an 11 32nd drill bit uh, just to where they're loose and then you'll grab a knife or exacto or small screwdriver or something and just start prying these apart. Once you get them pried apart, you'll have the guts in there. Uh, these three posts, the one there, and there and there, are your important things. You don't want to get rid of them. Basically, you're just going to start peeling back all the uh, kind of rubber stuff they've got in there. You'll uh, dig at that until you get down to the plastic. Okay, so once you've got through your plastic always, uh, you can drill out with a 27 64th drill bit. Just start drilling, chopping some of it out. You could also use a Dremel or something like that. Just start getting all of your material, leaving this upper part alone. Don't touch any of it. Just down in here. And then you'll come down to a little piece that looks like as well. So it's got these two fins on it. Uh, just drill down into him with that 2764th bit. Just keep drilling. And then uh, once you get down to him quite a ways, you can uh, then get in there, pry out that whole piece, and then you'll be left with this. Clean out some more of your goop, uh, that rubber silicone stuff in there. Clean some more of it out. Clean up these contacts. And then you're ready to go. One other thing you'll have to do is on the top piece here, you'll take your uh, 1 8 drill bit and drill out that hole um, and that'll give you room for the new sensor to fit in it because it doesn't fit in the stock size hole. So then you were ready to go ahead and go back over to the bench. Now that we've got the map sensor taken apart, we've got the uh, guts all out is all emptied out there. Uh, Basically, we'll want to grab our new map sensor, which looks much, much tinier. <laughs> is this little bitty guy right here. Basically, we'll just need to be putting him in the little hole that we drilled out earlier. And on the bottom piece, we'll need to sit inside there, and then we need to wire him up. And wiring is the hard part here. Uh, basically, you're going to need a soldering iron, and you're going to need, you know, teeny tiny wire, probably in the range of... Oh, probably 18 to 20 gauge, uh, maybe even smaller if you've got it. Um, you don't need very big wire, so we'll get them soldered up, and I'll show you which pins you need to actually solder to and where they go in respect to the inside here. Where that notch is at is where pin number one is at. Number one, two, three, four. One next to the notch, four at the farthest left. Only ones you care about are two, three, and four. All the other ones you don't even need to touch. We're gonna be soldering for two, three, and four. And again, in the image, I will show you where those need to go to. So what I like to do is throw some solder onto the, onto the pins that we're gonna be using on the bottom of the pins. And then we're gonna get our wire ready and We'll go ahead and put some, throw some solder down on them as well. This is really hard to solder. They actually, they sell Zincron or however you pronounce their website's name. They sell a little uh, kind of motherboard kind of thing, a uh, little circuit board. You can solder this piece onto, and then you can solder the wires out from it. And I strongly suggest going that route 
because it would be way easier than doing it like this, but I didn't want to because I wanted to try this first. I would say that's going to be a lot easier, but they're about $5 a piece. I'll put a link in the description. So the easiest way I've found to do this is hold on to your little bitty guy with some pliers. I've got my uh, soldering iron sitting down on the, uh, on the table. I've got my wire. I'm going to solder to it, and what I want to do is I want to set... I've got solder on the end of my wire, and I've got it on my uh, pin out as well. So what I want to do is I want to set the pin on top of the wire, heat them up, let the solder connect to each other, and then that'll make my joint. So now I've got the wires connected to my sensor. Now it's time to go ahead and connect them to the plug for the sensor. So whenever you look inside, again, this will be on my diagram that I'll post down in the description. Um, but uh, when you look inside, you've got three spots that connect, uh, and those connect to your plug on the outside here. Uh, outside one is going to be where number two goes, inside one is where number three goes, and then your farthest outside one is where number four goes. Again, that will be in the diagram, you'll want to check that out. Basically, same method here. I'll put some solder on the wires, put some solder on uh, the connector, the connection, and then I will just heat them up and get them to stick. Once you're doing this in here, be careful not to uh, melt your edges or anything with the soldering iron you want those to stay as good as possible so we can reseal it a little, uh, a little bit easier Okay, so now we got some solder in there. Now it's time to uh, start laying them down. What I do is I flip my sensor upside down to where the uh, where the nipple on it faces downward, and solder them in that way because that's exactly how they need to go from left to right. And then whenever we go to put it in there, we'll roll them back over the top. You could also, I've got quite a bit of wire on mine, um, you could clip it down, I'm just going to do it long, um, doesn't really make much difference, there's plenty of room in there for the wire to go. So before we put this together, I think we'll go ahead and test it just to make sure that it is actually a 2.5 bar like it says. Um, basically what you'll do is on your voltage, which is, uh, if you look on the inside, you can see the voltage. Again, in the diagram, I'll have this information, but you can see a V, G, and an O with your voltage, ground, output voltage. Um, basically on your voltage, put 5 volts, plug in the ground, and then connect, then with your voltage meter, check the voltage between the... Uh, ground and the voltage output and that'll give you a readout of 1.8 volts of a 2.5 bar and it'll be 1.22 if it's a 4 bar I'm not sure right off the top of my head what a 3 bar would be but I can put it in the description as well alright so let's test this out our voltage meter and then our 5 volt source which I'm going to use a computer power supply because that's what I do for those who don't know on a computer power supply your red wire is 5 volts black is ground yellow is 12 volts and if it has orange that's gonna be uh, around 3 volts uh, basically I plug my red wire into my voltage input 
black into my ground, and then I left my uh, voltage output exposed. So we can put our multimeter on uh, the ground in the output, and that'll give us our answer. So all we got to do is take our plug, we'll plug it in. You don't have to have this plug, obviously. You can just like clip it to the wires. And then we'll turn on our power supply, which again, uh, for those who don't know, to turn on a computer power supply without a computer, if you plug the green wire into a ground, it'll turn on. Uh, just use a, a paper clip, unbend, bend it, and stick it on in there. All right, we have voila. Turn our multimeter to our proper voltage, DC 20. And put our ground on our ground. Put this on our on our voltage, and it's reading 177. I would guess that that's probably close enough to 180, 1.8 that it will still work. Uh, the other one that I had, whenever I tested it, it gets 181. So 1.78, hoping that that's going to be close enough for this one. My, I've got another one that I can use if this 4 bar doesn't work, or if this 2.5 bar doesn't work. but. Next step is going to be to seal them on up, which just some RTV will work, Honda Bond. Um, we'll put that into our hole we drilled earlier and just kind of stuff all our wires down in there. Just make sure you don't get any Honda Bond covering your connections, and you should be good to go. Just kind of test put them on there real quick just to make sure we don't bend stuff out of. So bad this causes wires to get crossed or anything, so. Okay, so now that we've got them in there, uh, just testing them to make sure our solders don't break or anything like that. I had one break, um, so we'll fix that and then go ahead and get them all sealed up. All we really need to do is <clears throat> take a little bit of RTV, Honda Bond, whatever you got. And we'll just kind of spread them around the inside of our case. Don't want to get any inside of our sensor because then, well, or even in that hole that the sensor goes into because it could then get inside the sensor. We don't want any of that. We need it to make sure it makes a nice good seal. And we'll go ahead and put our sensor in there carefully. And then just mush them on down. And then once you got got them on there, go ahead and mount it to a throttle body for a while, just so that that can seal up. You could also use a JB weld or something like that to hold it closed, but you need it to make a seal so that the uh, so that the air can go directly into the sensor and work as it should. So there you go, guys. That's how you make a thirteen dollar. Uh, stock $13 map sensor uh, ready for boost inside the stock housing. If I was to do it again, I would definitely get those from Zencron. I know they're about five bucks a piece, but honestly, it's probably worth it because these are a bitch to solder because they're so tiny. So, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, again, check the description for all the information that I talked about. Give a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave a comment if you'd like. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and We'll see you in the next video.